My older brother is Derek uh, from Seattle, Pastor Derek. And uh, he went through, I don't know if you guys heard about, did you ever like share about it? But yeah. It was like two and a half years ago or so. But uh, he's a pastor in Seattle, and my brother pretty much, he's been there like 10 years or possibly even more. But long story short, he went through a sudden um, heart issue. Um, and that's why, like, with Cammy and everything reaching out, like, right now, it was just, I had to come. It's God's timing to come and share. I haven't shared in church in like 20 years, but <laughs> here I am. <laughs> but uh, it's God bringing me back to share and testify to his works. You know? And how could we not share about what God does? And it's like you read it in the Bible, and it's like, how can you hold back from his glory? And so I said, Candy, I got to share about Derek. It's, I experienced the miracle. I'm a witness to what happened, so I just want to share. Mm. Haven't really shared about this yet, so you guys are the first. <laughs> but um, pretty much what happened was, Cammie, um, Bart and I came to Cammie and Jocelyn, and my brother was going through, like I think, major heart problems. He didn't realize it, he was dizzy, the usual like things, I guess, shortness of breath. Um, on Christmas Eve, I think it was 2019 and 2020, <laughs> Pandemic years, no one knows, like, you know, mm -hmm. what year was what, but uh, I think it was 2020, but long story short, he called, uh, no, he went to the hospital, checked himself in, which he never goes to a doctor. So Derek, you know, drove himself on Christmas Eve, and it's like they had a church service and everything. So, you know, so it was kind of serious if he felt that he had to, like, drive himself to the hospital. He went, and they found that his heart was blocked 90, uh, no, sorry, there was 10% flow yet left wow. for his heart. And he didn't realize how bad it was. So 10%, like, he called all of us and each of the siblings and said, you know, guys, I love you, kind of call, you know, and we're all like, what's going on, you know? Because uh, when, you know, you know, Brothers and sisters don't normally call and say, I love you so much, you know, and so it's like, you know, it's serious. So he said, I'm going to have a procedure, whatever, and meanwhile, we didn't know the severity of it, but it was like a quadruple bypass, you know, like the extreme of a heart attack. And basically, uh, they called us and said, we got to go see Derek because it could be the last time we see him. And, you know, it's just kind of, it's like life altering, you know, to have a close family member, uh, let alone a sibling similar to your age, uh, possibly die, you know. And so um, we went, you know, and uh, we, uh, I can't remember if we prayed with you after we went, or I think we, did we go twice or once? No, it's not twice. twice. I think it was twice, okay. So we, I think we went, and I went and saw him. And, and I think we prayed with Cammie beforehand, but Bart and I, and I mean, I was, we all, a lot of Christians, I could testify to this, are in the wilderness. And whether you go to church or not, it's, you could be living a life of not knowing God and just kind of the world, kind of just the ways, the patterns, the, you know, whatever we can be consumed by, it's everywhere. You know? And no one realizes it's not like, you could be an incredible sinner, but you could be wasting your time and not your eyes not open to God and knowing Him and seeing Him. You could be spiritually blind and spiritually deaf, spiritually lame. And I think that's where I was and I didn't realize it. And so, long story, well, <laughs> maybe hopefully it's not a long story, but uh, I'm going to edit it. But So I went to see Derek and it was just traumatic to see um, that my brother was pretty much so bad with his heart and everything and they actually did a cutting edge procedure with an LVAD machine it's not a pacemaker it's kind of a, a, a machine that replaces the pumping of the heart and, uh, I don't want to gross it out but uh, it's very expensive <laughs> millions of dollars they said but, uh, and Derek was kind of a pioneer for this procedure but anyhow uh, they did the procedure I saw my brother finally come out of it and he, it was so traumatic to see a brother like that, we talk like this, and then like a vegetable. Like kind of like a, out of it. His eyes weren't even clear. It was a show of you know, who you knew in your whole life. And 
and that was the image I had in my head. And I was there for a few days, and I, uh, the day I was about to leave, I was getting my uh, alone time with my brother in the room, and you know, just praying, and um, pretty much, I, walk, I, I was just uh, taken back by emotion. I walked into the hallway, and I was like, God, you know, just be with my brother, heal him, you know, and whatnot. But just, I was just a moment of silence, and I, I heard an inner voice without words, you know, not audible or anything, but, and uh, God was saying to me, you're a witness. And I was like, this has never happened to me in my life. So uh, that's why I have to come and share, because Cameron was part of this, and now I'm coming back to share, like, the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And pretty much, um, I was like, clearly, so peaceful, his spirit was upon me. And uh, it said, uh, he said to me, that I was thinking right away, healing. Derek's gonna be healed, you know? But I had such faith that I was alive the first time. So I went back to the room and I was just, peace of God was upon me and I never felt this. I came back in and my brother was so clear, talking to me, he's like, oh, who's gonna make it to the Super Bowl? <laughs> I was like, because we're sports fanatics, Seattle. <laughs> But uh, pretty much, um, we were talking about which quarterbacks are starting, the normal stuff we always talk about. It was like chills, you know? And in my mind, I thought a miracle just happened there. And uh, so we were talking for a while, and then I was I left actually a couple hours later on the plane uh, back to New York, and then all of a sudden I hear Derek E. coli infected him. It was, it was healing, but infection is terrible. Mm -hmm. For healing, especially like with it, you know, or whatever. But, so they couldn't put it together until it was healed. So E. coli is a big thing in hospitals. So the infection made it almost worse. Yeah. And I was thinking, like, how did that just happen, though? <laughs> you know? And I realized I still had an inner peace and an inner faith that it's going to happen. Because he said, you're a witness. So I still believed, and I either I prayed with you before I went on that trip or after. Long story short, that's when I started um, praising God in my life, you know? Uh, as far as praising during this time was very hard because it's a trial. Who wants to praise during a trial? <laughs> I mean, you're thinking like, come on, God. But I was like, I had that faith for the first time. I was like starting to praise and worship him in spite of my brother and seeing that he might, you know, be gone. And the faith was made so strong during that time because I was almost like acknowledging he's in control. You know, praising God during our trials is acknowledging he's in control. And my faith started growing at that point and I think God was starting to heal me and my healing healing my faith. So it was God used what the enemy meant for evil, for good. And literally if that didn't happen I don't even know if my eyes would be open to what he's doing now, you know, who he is. My life is transforming. I'm, we're all changing, you know. It's not about where you're at now. It's how God's going to change you. It's, um, so I actually have a couple verses really quick, but I'm not going to do a whole sermon here, but just a couple things I wanted to share. Like I started reading, reading Revelation. <laughs> Shockley's Revelation Church, <laughs> and uh, and Derek always loved Revelation, so he's really uh, well versed in uh, you know like doesn't know the time when God's coming and whatnot, but very uh, about he's just kind of like uh, where he's got discernment and the things that are happening during this time. It's his playoff time, the kingdom. It really is. I, I know. I, I was talk, talking to my brother yesterday. We're in the playoffs now. You know, it's like, this is not just a game, it's a game of souls. Yeah. And in Isaiah, I actually went from Revelation to Isaiah. Isaiah talks about how in the wilderness he'll bring out, you know, his peak, he'll make uh, the wilderness green. Well, let me just read the verse. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good to, it says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up, do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness 
and streams in the wasteland. It says, even the wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I will provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And I just feel like it's a time where God's going to bring his people back. You know, and it's, it's in Isaiah. He's going to do it. He already foretold us. And it's just my eyes have been like literally healed spiritually, not fully like I could see everything, but I could finally see God in my life. And it, uh, it says the former things are going and the new things are coming. And that's what he's doing. So pretty much back to Derek, um, what happened was uh, he literally months of like, you know, being in a coma. Uh, and it was just a, a roller coaster. So literally, now he's preaching. He's back to um, preaching. He's actually, it's not about numbers and whatnot. But even recently, uh, I think a month ago, he did like what's called, I don't know if you guys know, Reels. Um, it's like, I don't know, little tiny videos on Facebook or whatnot. He did it like a, a minute um, a reel. On, um, he used Tiger Woods as an example whatnot. It has like 9 million views. Oh. And it's just kind of like, I, we all, the brothers and all of us call Derek Lazaric. Because, <laughs> you know, it's like Lazarus, really, he's a miracle. And I give you the glory, God. I mean, you could do this to anyone or anyone. And I saw the miracle. I just wanted to witness and glorify that God is powerful. He's, and not only just physically, most of us spiritually. And uh, the last thing I just wanted to share was the spiritual part. There was um, John chapter 9. It was during this week, I was walking, you know, and, and just kind of praising, praying. John 9 came upon me. Uh, I mean, this was in my heart about sharing that today. And it was just about the man who was born blind. And the Pharisees said, you know, uh, oh no, sorry, the disciples said, uh, back to reading it again, sorry. <laughs> Never paraphrase. Um, John 9, so it says, and he went along, and he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus said. But if this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Mm -hmm. And it's not about his sin. It wasn't about the guy's sin. It was about God displaying his works. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says, as long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work, while I am in the world and the light of the world. And the, the Pharisees were kind of like, oh, wait, so after saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with saliva, very odd, and put it on, this man, on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This means sent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. Then the uh, Pharisees were talking about, like, how can he do this on the Sabbath, you know, or how did this happen? Like, they were all concerned about the details, like, oh, he did it on the Sabbath, this and that. So um, it says, some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, others asked, how can a sinner perform such signs? So they were divided. Then in chapter 20, I mean, verse 24, second time they summoned the man who had been blind, Give glory to God by telling the truth, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. <laughs> so it's not about the details of how things happen. It's that he could see, you know? <laughs> and then um, pretty much at the end, it talks the Pharisees were it's spiritual blindness. Uh, Jesus heard that they threw him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? The man asked. Tell me that I may believe in him. This is the blind man who was healed. Jesus said, You have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. When the man said, Lord, I believe, then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard this and asked, What are we blind to? Jesus said, If you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. So it's like Jesus came to like, not for the ones who claim they can see. 
who came to give sight to the blind. And I, I feel like I was similar to that blind man, and in a way, in a sense, I could relate to the mud, to be honest, because the mud to me was kind of like the world. And, you know, the things of the world, and um, just being com comfortable is the world. Anything that keeps us, that keeps our time from connecting. So, to me, like, the world was the mud, and I feel like he's kind of washing away the way I lived, and the way I saw, the way I am. Mm. And so, I would just want to encourage everyone today, the biggest healing that we can get is spiritual. Mm. Our eyes, our ears, that we may see and know him, mm. and experience him, and not claim that we uh, can see. Mm -hmm. Let us really see what he can do. And, you know, it's just, I just wanted to acknowledge, and I just uh, came, uh, when I came in the um, church today, I, and the thing with seeing, it's, I, I, I'm just starting to see, like, visions and little things, like, which I never had before. But, uh, and Joel chapter 2 talks about that, you know, young men will see visions, old men will dream dreams, men and women will prophesy, uh, servants, whatever. This is all things to happen, and this is, it's time, you know, and when I walked in today, I sensed that um, the Jesus and the 5,000 and the fish, and Jesus could take two fish and five loaves. You know, it doesn't matter about numbers. As long as you believe, it's he can multiply instantly. Yes. So I'm just declaring that over this church, and I sensed it when I walked in, his spirit put it upon me, and just, I sense God's presence. And, Literally, don't look around. Don't use visual eyes. Mm -hmm. Use spiritual eyes. Mm -hmm. As long as you believe, mm -hmm. you can take two fish and five loaves. Mm -hmm. You know, so actually be excited. Mm -hmm. Be excited about what he's going to do from, you know, little something little to him demonstrating.